exciting new tool to create augmented reality. If you visit their website at blipper.com, you'll notice that it feels more for corporate use or for the business world. But if you look underneath of Learn More, there is a link for Blipper for Education, and it'll definitely explain the purpose and the intent of using this tool in educational spaces. I recommend scrolling all the way to the bottom, clicking the Contact Us button, and then sending off for information on how to get a free educator's account. Um, just say that you're a teacher and where you're at, and usually in about 24 hours you'll hear back from them with access to the Blip Builder website where you can eventually create these augmented reality um, blips. Now, you do need to create on a laptop um, with access to the Blip Builder website, and then you do scan them with the free BlipR app on an iPad or a uh, mobile device. Um, the Blip Builder website also has a great help guide that I would recommend visiting at help.blipr.com slash guide. And here you can learn everything about getting started, building your blip, and even see some inspiration for what types of augmented reality experiences you can build with this great tool. Um, I'm going to show you what they look like and hopefully give you some ideas here. As you'll see, I'm logged into my dashboard on Blipbar with my free educator's account. And when you do get to this point, I recommend going down on the left-hand side panel to manage users and adding in your student names here with new users. That way they will be um, underneath your account, your education account. And then my campaigns is where your blips are stored. They're, notice they're called campaigns here. A lot of it's just getting used to their terminology. We're going to start a new campaign today. We're going to call this one a book report as an example blip and create that campaign and create a new blip from within it. Um, this book report is going to be called Fenway and we're going to choose our marker which is the book cover. I just took an image of that book cover, a picture of it with my phone and I'm going to load it up into the BlipR dashboard so that I can use it as my trigger image. I'll create the blip from that. So this is my son's current AR book. We're going to use it to create our blip. All right, it looks like our trigger image was successfully uploaded now, and, and we can now see that we're inside of the asset panel of hub.blipR.com. And I hope to show you the potential here of what you can do with just a taste of this. Um, you do have some media already saved in the Blip library that, that kind of comes with it, I guess. These little interactive buttons that can you can add on top of your trigger image to do different things. So let's for say, for example, that we want our, um, our readers or our learners that are going to blip here to hear some music playing when they scan this. Um, we'll put a little listen button on here and then when they click that with their finger we're going to add an action and the action will be on tap to play a sound, an mp3, and I just happened to find a, a sound from um, the internet a free mp3 that's take me out to the ball game so we'll upload that into our blip bar library it's saved on my desktop right now it's called take me out to the ball game there it comes and again like i said when people are interacting with this blip they'll have the option to touch that button and hear that music play let's confirm this and confirm this as well now we have one button we can always um, resize it and replace it, but we have one button that's ready for us. Um, let's also do, and you can create your own images for these little buttons that lay on top of your trigger image, but um, let's do another one that maybe takes us to the author's website. So David A. Kelly, and let's make this one smaller and put it off to the side over here. Um, he has an author's web page. So for this one, I'll just copy the URL and back where I'm building that, again, add an interaction that is to go visit a URL. And I'll paste this in here, confirm it, and I've got two, two, two actions now built into this blip. Um, a third one might be to visit a website. So again, we could use any kind of an image here. 
Um, let's just use a, a button that says um, visit this. And for this one, let's have them go learn about Fenway Park from the Boston Red Sox website. So I'm going to again copy the URL inside of my um, button, add an action or an interaction that's a website, and paste my link in there. Confirm that as well. So you can see how easy it is, and you can be very creative with what kind of actions and interactions you add on top of your blip. I'm going to go ahead now and save this. And of course we know an important step in creating augmented reality is to publish them. These are going to be um, less public than the augmented reality experiences you might create with Erasma. You will need to enter a blip code into the BlipR app, um, but this is great for education in my opinion. That way we know who is viewing our blips and who is interacting with them as well. So the blip code would now be typed into the app, and when I scan that, I'm going to see three buttons pop out, augmented reality style, which I will then be able to tap with my finger and go to three different places. One would play a, a sound, and the other, would, other two would visit websites. So this is basically all there is to it in creating um, a blip with Blipar. Um, I hope you can see the potential, and the sky's the limit with the experiences you can create. So share your best um, created augmented reality back with me, and I